Welcome to Dynamics with Danish. Today's topic is basic search app and this is part one. In this video, we are going to look at how to create a canvas app that will search the data in Dynamics 365. We will be looking at how to use the collections to the search using the search function and resetting the fields. So let's get, let's get started. I've started by creating a blank tablet app because we will be residing one of the tab in CRM. So we want it to occupy the entire form space. To expedite the process, I've already created my main controls by adding the label, combo box, and rectangle. I've also changed some properties and then designed it to look how it's looking right now. I will be also using component that I created in last video. You can find the link to the video on how to create component in the description. Let's start with importing the component. To import the component, you have to click, uh, go to insert and click on the component and then say import component. When you click on import component, you will get a pop-up where you can upload the file. Once you click on the upload file, you will get a pop-up where you can select your component. I've already imported my component and it's called section. Now I'll be adding that component on my screen. I don't want the line, so I'm gonna hide the line. And then I'm going to rename this type, this uh, section as contact information. I'm going to do the same thing. With the second section called as address. Now I have two sections, contact information and address information. I'll be adding three attributes under contact information and three attributes under address information. Now I have rectangle, combo box and label as three items. I'm gonna select those items and then group them. Grouping is a nice feature because then it's easier for you to move the components that are grouped together. And also if you resize the components, it also stays in place. So it's a nice way of arranging your application for future improvements. I've already uh, designed my screen. So I'm gonna go back to the screen one where I've designed my application. I have contact information, address information with all the attributes. To, now I have combo boxes and to show the data on the combo boxes, I need to specify the items or the data source on the combo box. So the data source right now is set to none. And then if you go to the items, you'll see that it's set to combo box sample. To select the data set, I've created a function which would pull all the first names which are not blank. And then I'm gonna get the distinct first names out of those data set. So I'm doing a filter on contacts and then I'm identifying the contacts that have first name populated on them. And then I'm doing a distinct on all the data that I've re retrieved on the first name. I've done the similar exercises on all the other items as well. Now let's go and add a button. I'm gonna name this button as search. Now on this button click, I want the application to search for the record based on the attributes selected. So for this purpose, I'm gonna copy the code and then, exp and then walk you through the code. In the first section, it's for the first name. I have a if block 
inside the if block the first parameter is going to be your condition i'm checking all the selected items and then counting the number of rows for all the selected items if the number of items is greater than zero then this is the true condition in the true condition i'm using the collect function to collect the data in one of the source inside the collect function i also have a search function this search function is searching the data based on the selected value on the first name combo box so the attributes on the search the first attribute is going to be the source which is contact the second is going to be the text for which i'm going to search in my data source and then the third attribute is going to be the, co the column name i can have multiple columns listed in the search function as well so in case if you have if you want to search the text which has first name and last name then you can have first name comma and then you can have full name so similarly you can do a search on contacts using this text that is selected in the first name and then you can search it on first name and full name for this demo i'm going to only use first name similarly i have formatted the other conditions as well but so my first condition for first name does not have an else statement because i want if the record count is zero then i i do not want to populate uh, filter contact one in the last name section i again have a if condition where i'm checking the same thing if any item has been selected in the last name if i find any item has been selected in the last name i go to this if block uh, the true block in the true block i'm again checking if the filtered count one has any data or not if it is if it does not have a data then i am doing a search on the contact and adding the data into filter contact two similar concept just doing the search on the contact but if my filtered contact one is populated then i'm doing the search on the filtered contact one instead of contacts so here is the difference if filtered contact one uh, contains the data then i'll be doing the search on filtered contact one if filtered contact one does not have a data then i'll be doing the search on the entire contacts the reason for this is because each of those attributes i want it to be an end condition so if for example if you selected first name as joe and the last name as teen i want to search where the first name is equal to joe and the last name is equal to teen and that's why in this condition first i will be searching on the first name so i get the first name as joe which is which which is under the filter contact one then when i come to my second condition of last name i'm going through and then checking if my filtered contact one is equal to zero or not in this case it would be one so it would go to the else statement and in the else statement you will do a search on filtered contact one it will try to find any contact that has last name as dean but in the filtered contact there would be only one and in the same thing on job title as well the only change in job title is i'm using a different filtered contact variables so in this i'm using filtered contact 3 same concept going down in the under city now i'll be using filtered contact 4 in in my collection 
and in state i'll be using filtered contact 5 and in zip i'll be using filtered contact 6. now the else condition in all of them if you notice we also have an else condition now this else condition is when your selected items are not populated so for example say when you're searching the first name is empty in the combo box you didn't select the first name in that case you want the collection or say last name the last name is empty no one selected last name so you wanted to want to carry forward whatever is in filtered contact one and add it in filtered contact two so basically you just want if it's first name then everything regarding first name is always in filtered contact one um, and in last name it will be always in filtered contact two now let's go and run this application so i'm going to search for job title as consultant and my state would be Ontario. Now when I do the search, you'll see that nothing comes up. The reason is because I've not written any code down here to show the data. But if you go to the files and go to collections, you'd see that now we are seeing filtered contact one, two, three, four, five, six. If you go to filtered contact one, there's nothing in filtered contact one because we we did not populate anything in filtered contact one, uh, which is the first name. Then filtered contact two will also be empty because we also left last name is empty. Filtered contact three will be populated because we populated the job title. And if you go to the job title, it should be in J. Now all of these are consultants because it only searched for consultants. Now filtered contact four is for city. Now we did not populate it city, so it will just carry forward all the records from filtered contact three into filtered contact four. You see, it still has the same records. Now, we populated city, Ontario. So in filtered contact three, if you see, we would have we have Paul Ken, Nenabul, Cliff Ditko, and few others. Now, if I go to filtered contact five, where we have populated the city, it will only bring me the records that have Ontario in the city. And you can basically see the city here as well. So if you go to address one underscore city, which is on the left, Oh, sorry, we actually did the search on state. So Ontario is on four records, but the top record, which has Washington, should not be populated. And let's see what the name of that record is. So the name of that record is Paul Cannon. So if I go to filtered contact five, where we have Ontario as one of the selected value, and we look at the records, we, only, we should only see four records and then we should not see Paul Cannon and we are not, which means our logic is running fine. Now to reset all the attributes back to its normal stage, we're gonna add one more button. Then I call up we, we're going to call this button as reset.
and then on select I'm going to add the reset command and reset function is pretty simple you just have to state reset and then the name of the item in this case it's all our combo boxes so now again when I play this and I hit the reset button you'll see that all the items all the values in the items are removed that's it for today I hope this was really helpful for you thank you for watching don't forget to click the subscribe button and leave a comment below thank you